Hi, welcome back to Neural Splendor. Today I got a call from one of our branches and the mechanic said that he needed some assistance. They had a, a truck that, uh, class eight tractor with an ISX 871 that when the driver was sitting and idling, you could smell a fuel smell in the exhaust. You shouldn't smell a raw fuel smell in the exhaust ever on any of the engines. So on this engine, uh, he said that he had done an injector cutout test and he did an injector, an automated injector performance test and all the injectors had passed. And he said he couldn't figure out where that fuel smell was coming from in the exhaust. Now, at the beginning of this video, I said it was an ISX 871. So I'm going to show you uh, where the fuel smell was coming from. I uh, offered him a suggestion to check something with what we call the number seven injector. And it's not a fuel injector that injects fuel into the engine. But on this engine, it's actually in the exhaust system and it injects fuel prior to the uh, inlet to the after treatment catalyst. And it injects the fuel as a mist. And that fuel is then turned into heat so that you can have a uh, stationary regen. So let's take a look. I'm going to show you a picture of uh, that injector and I'm going to tell you what happened to it. This is what some people call the number seven injector. Cummins calls it the doser in their parts manual. This is the injector that uh, fu meters fuel into the exhaust system when you're in a stationary regen. The center port on top is where the fuel goes in. The bottom right port is water. There's another port on the back for water. The water flows through it to cool it. It's got a two pin plug it is pulse width. So you can't measure voltage in the system. It varies. This is the bottom of the injector, the part that injects the fuel in the center here, right here. This is called the poppet. Occasionally the poppet will actually fall out of there and then you'll have fuel smell in the exhaust. And that's what happened to us. This engine does a test at startup where it pressurizes the fuel system and pressurizes the injector. If that poppet's gone, it'll just spray fuel into the exhaust pipe. And then as the engine's idling, you'll smell it in the exhaust. That is what happened to ours. This is the install kit that you can order with the injector. If you buy the kit, it comes with it. You should use the new mounting bolts. Uh, the tie is just to tie the harness up so it doesn't hit the hot exhaust pipe. The steel gasket goes against the injector. The fiber gasket that you see here goes down and do a recess built into the cast iron pipe that it bolts on. Torque at the spec, use anti-seize on the bolt threads. When you install a new doser injector or recon doser injector, you should do a catalyst reset under the maintenance section in advanced ECM information section. And that will reset the fueling table in the software. The software learns how much fuel to dose. If you have a cracked down pipe, you'll notice that through the course of a regen, which is about 45 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on uh, other circumstances. During that time, you'll see that in, if you have a cracked pipe, you'll see the smoke come out. Sometimes it's light, sometimes it's heavier, sometimes it stops. It just depends what the system's doing because it's watching those temperatures and can, trying to control as, as much as it can what goes on so the after treatment is properly clean but not damaged. If you don't have the software to do the reset, it's not the end of the world. You're not going to damage anything. The system might be a little aggressive when it first starts. If your other injector was plugged up or had a, a tip problem where it wasn't metering fuel like it should have, the system might have learned that it needed to be a little more aggressive with fueling. But it is, it is learning. It adapts. So it, you're not going to destroy anything if you just bolt an injector on. Uh, the two times that injector is used that I know of is when you physically put it into a regen with a software. And the second time is if the driver's driving and that regen light comes on, then it will, uh, when he hits, when he stops, parks, 
sets the parking brake, keeps his foot off the clutch and the brake pedal. Because if you touch those, you'll kick it out. Uh, and then he pushes that button on the dash. The regen button, after treatment button, holds it up to the momentary position to do a regen. Remember, you can only uh, put the engine into a regen with that switch on the dash if the light is lit up requesting for it. That's the light that has the three short lines that are horizontal and then it looks like there's clouds to the right. And that'll only come on if the system's not able to passively regen. That doesn't mean there's a problem. Uh, you might be in town where you're not on a freeway to get the heat up enough for it to do a passive regen. You might be doing stops. Pretty much to do a passive regen, you've got to be running over 45 miles an hour for about 15 minutes to get the heat build up. And then if the system sees that it needs to do it, it will do it. Thanks for joining me. See you next time on Neurosplendor.